So we're going to pick up where we sort of ended last time. We were talking about pore elasticity or kind of more specifically at the, at the end of the class we were talking about visceral elasticity because basically pore elastic materials are visco elastic materials. <coughs> and <coughs> we were talking about sort of two viscous effects, creep and stress relaxation, and I was kind of given an explanation of that, and I'll, re I'll go over that one more time. So creep is a scenario where we apply a load to the material, and we hold the load fixed. Right? So you can imagine if I'm holding a brick, and I squeeze that brick with all, with, you know, the, all the force I can apply to it, and then I hold that force fixed, and it, be, and it continues to strain. So if I squeeze the brick, and it, you know, its deformation is here, and I hold it with the same force, then over time, I'll continue to strain it. I'll continue to squeeze it. Okay? That's creep. <coughs> and stress relaxation is uh, sort of the, the analogous effect with stress. So uh, in, this, in that case, I would squeeze the brick and hold not the force constant, not the force that I'm applying to it, but rather I would hold the position of my hands constant. Right? So I'd squeeze the brick, hold the deformation constant, and over time, the force that I have to apply to hold it at that constant strain would go down. Right? So it would relax. And <clears throat> so there's many kind of constitutive models for creep. Uh, in Zobac, I think we talked about several of them. Um, one, this is just one example, is this, is a power law fit. Uh, so I'll show you some data on the next slide where this does a pretty good job. But, but basically, you know, your, your strain is, is time dependent. You have some initial strain that is a function of time, and then C and N are some type of fitting parameters um, to the constitutive law. Okay. So. Here's an example. Let me see if I can zoom in here. So this is an actual test that was done where you see the, the this line here is the confining pressure. Right? So this is like hydrostatic loading. So in other words, you know, you have a sample and you stick it into a, a pressure bath, right? So you stick it into some fluid and you pressure up or intensify the pressure in the fluid and it's squeezed on all sides. And then at some point, at some point, that intensification is held constant. So the pressure is held constant on the material and the strain is measured. And you can see here, this curve is the strain. So as even though the pressure is constant, the material be, continues to deform over time. That's creep. And if you know what the constitutive or what the response of that power law-like function is, right? I mean, if you, if you have a, a function that's like this, that, that's going to have some type of response like that. So you can see if I chose my... Uh, C and N correctly, I could do a pretty good job fitting this, this type of response. Right? And so then this test is just continued. So, um, so it's unloaded, reloaded, and held constant. And then the response, you know, you have an elastic unloading, some initial elasticity, and then this creep like that. Right? So and then that's just carried out over and over and over again. So this is actually real test data showing the effects of creep on uh, a sand, right? So whenever you see, um, when, whenever you're talking about material testing and you see like cleaned and dried or dried, this is typically where the sample's been baked to remove out to all the, any hydrocarbon residue or, or water that's in the, in the material. So that's just the dry material response. So here's the, an example of stress relaxation, and there's a couple things going on here. So the first thing you'll notice is that this test 
was actually, these tests were actually carried out at three different strain rates. So all of these are pretty slow, okay? They're pretty slow, but you do see basically the material response over the three strain rates changes. And this is fairly characteristic for many, many materials in that the strength of the material will change maybe about, usually it hardens, about 5% per decade of strain rate, right? So you see that, you know, there I'm changing the strain rate by a factor of 10 every time. And so for every decade of strain rate, then you get about a 5% increase in strength, right? These are still very, very low strain rates, right? This is, this is what you achieve uh, in the lab in a, you know, in a quasi-static testing environment, right? So the, there's no sort of wave propagation. To get to give you a um, to give you a, a, a counter example, you know, I used to work in impact mechanics, uh, and and so you're talking about car crashes, and so in a car crash, the strain rate would be something like 10 to the third or 10 to the fourth. So like, you know, from this from this one, 10 to the third is 10 orders of magnitude higher strain rate. So that could be, you know, if you use that 5% per decade of strain rate rule of thumb for increase in strength, you know, this material would be up here. The strength of the material would be up here. Right? So much, much stronger. Materials typically are much, much stronger when you, when you load them fast or impact them. Uh, so, so here you have this uh, sort of uh, the rate effect, and there's also a pressure effect. So this family of curves was conducted at a confining pressure of 15 megapascal, and this family of curves, this family of curves here, was conducted at a confining pressure of 50 megapascal. So you see a rate effect and a pressure effect, and it's a, it's not completely obvious in this plot, but but usually the rate effect is intensified with the pressure. So the higher the pressure, the more rate effects you'll see often. Okay, and so these tests were, you know, stress relaxation tests. So in other words, the material was strained to a constant value, somewhere around here, 0.7, I guess, 0.07, so 7% strain. And then the strain was held fixed, and the stress was monitored over time, and you see that the material relaxed over several hours there. So this is the stress relaxation effect. Again, these are real, this is real test data. So that really concludes uh, what I wanted to say about viscoelasticity and, and was hoping to cover it last class but didn't quite get